Declaring independence from England was a bold and very dangerous action. General George Washington was smart enough to know that he did not have enough men and enough uh, firepower to defeat what was probably the world's most powerful army, the army of the empire of Great Britain. Uh, but he also knew that he had one very important advantage. He was fighting on his own turf. A and the British army had to depend upon a 3,000 mile supply line stretching all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. America would also need strong allies. On the day the Declaration of Independence was signed, Benjamin Franklin, perhaps the most world-renowned of all Americans, set sail for France. France had been an enemy of Great Britain's for many centuries. But in fact, France was looking out after itself. It would only be willing to, to fight on the side of the Americans if they could be convinced that the Americans could win the war. The fate of America rested with George Washington and his makeshift Continental Army. Having faced stiff military and popular resistance in New England, the British commander, Sir William Howe, decided to send his troops to New York City and cut New England off from the other rebels. Washington was determined to keep the British out of New York. Howe's army of British regulars and German mercenaries called Hessians soundly defeated the small, untrained Continental Army, first at Brooklyn Heights on Long Island, and then in Manhattan itself. These defeats taught Washington a valuable lesson. One of the solutions that they came up with was that with an understaffed army that's small and inexperienced, which the American army was, Indian war styles, native war styles of hiding behind rocks and walls, jumping out from behind trees, ambushing, sniping, all kinds of guerrilla tactics really that the colonists had learned from the Indians during the previous wars because the British still marched you know, abreast, you know, 12 abreast in bright red coats through the woods were very visible, very enticing targets uh, if you were crouching behind a rock. The British Army pushed into New Jersey, occupying towns and punishing civilians as they advanced. Washington's retreating army was beginning to despair. Crossing the Delaware River on Christmas night, 1776, Washington used almost every man in his ragtag army to attack the British camp at Trenton, capturing more than 900 Hessians. He then struck at Princeton, forcing the British to withdraw from central New Jersey. The victory sent American spirits temporarily soaring, but Washington remained outnumbered and outsupplied. The cold winter of 1777 at Valley Forge was the Army's lowest point. The war was at a standstill, and the troops were miserable. I am sick and out of humor. Poor food, hard lodging, cold weather, fatigue, nasty clothes, vomit half my time, smoked out of my senses. The devil's in it. I can't endure it. Why are we sent here to starve and freeze? While the British enjoyed themselves in Philadelphia, Washington's troops huddled in crude log huts. They had little food or clothing. Some went barefoot. By spring, more than 3,000 men died of starvation or disease. So who were the men who fought for independence? In the beginning of the war, Men from all walks of life volunteered to fight for America's independence. Close to half of them were teenagers. But as the war dragged on, the better off began to hire the poor to fight the war. Some men used their slaves and indentured servants as substitutes, promising them their freedom if they managed to come out alive. Promises of bonus pay and land out west attracted many. <laughs> 